Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. Today, I'm thrilled to bring you a video that will help you to solve one of the most common challenges in portrait photography. Yes, I'm talking about the color cast. This video is inspired by a request from our subscriber Norma, who also sent us one of the images we will be working on today. Now, just before we begin, I'd like to let you know that this video is made possible by our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. By clicking the link in the description, you can purchase it at the discounted rate and access premium presets, skies, overlays, textures, LUTs and much more. For additional information, please visit our website cleverphotographer.com. Now moving into Luminar Neo, where we are in a catalog module looking at the two files we're going to be working on. We have a really good example of color cast here. The first image from Norma has this strong green cast all over it, coming from the plants and green around. After that, we have the second image and looking inside, you will see how we have this strong blue cast coming from a lots of blue elements in the image. So on this one, we're going to be removing the blue cast and on the first one, the green cast. So let's select the first image and then move it into edit module by clicking on a edit on the top of the screen or using E on our keyboard. Now, as always, the first thing we need to do is the basic development with the develop raw tool. We want to use that before we use any other tools in the application. So just very quickly, Let's go into our main toolbar, open the develop raw tool and start by going into the optics where we make sure that we check each of the options here. After that, just very quickly jump into the noise reduction, do it by the eye. Let's go for 15 or 20 on our luminosity, just adding a little bit of noise reduction and then going into the sharpness. And for the portrait, I usually like to stay around 40. To top it off, we want to add some masking on the sharpening. So let's go and stay between 60 or 70. So now we have the basic here. After that, we can jump into the light and black and whites while keeping an eye on our histogram. Maybe a little bit of extra exposure, add a little bit of contrast. We can make the highlights just a little bit darker by bringing the slider down equally with the shadows. Let's do a similar, maybe just somewhere around 15. And still looking at my histogram, we can bring the blacks down a little bit to add a little more contrast and we can increase the whites. So this is just very basic development to start. Let's close this, then jump into the color where we can add a little bit of vibrance. And in opposite, maybe we take the saturation and bring it down a little bit. Now this is the basic development. So we have dealt with the basic stuff. Now it's time to look at the cast. We still have lots of this green cast and the first place we can adjust it is here in the color section of our develop raw tool. Now looking at the sliders, you can see that with the temperature, we are working with the cool blue and with the warm orange. In a thin slider, we working with the green and the magenta or purple. So looking at the image, we have a lot of green. So that way we should take our slider and rather than going towards more green, we should take the slider and bring it up more towards the purple. Now you don't want to overdo it because you're going to make the whole image too purple. However, 
a little bit will help us to remove the initial green tint. So that already is much better. As always, keep an eye on the before and after so you don't overdo it. However, as a start, I think we're doing well. So the first tool you can use to remove the color cast on your portrait is the white balance in the color section of the develop tool. So first come first, we have added some tint on the magenta side. So we can now close the tool and we're going to move to other tools that we can use to remove the color cast. First come first, we're going to go all the way to the bottom of the main toolbar. And here in the professional section, we're going to open the color harmony. In a color harmony, let's just make it nice and visible. I want you to look for the color balance. It may be closed, so you just need to click on it and open it. Then click on a gray drop down box and select shadows. We're going to start from there. After that, similarly, like the white balance, we're going to look at the sliders. We have the cyan and red, but we don't worry about it as we don't have them on our picture. Then we have the magenta and green, and then we have the yellow and blue. We are not working with yellow and blue, so we need to come to magenta green. Once again, we have too much green. So we want to take this slider, and now we only work in with shadows, but we want to take it and bring it towards the purple or towards the magenta. Again, keep an eye on the image, not to overdo it, but I think just somewhere around minus seven is looking good. After this, we're going to click on a gray drop down box again and change it from shadows into midtone. So now we're going to be working with midtones. Again, same slider from magenta to green. So we're going to be going towards the magenta. Now be careful there. We don't want to make it too pink, but I think maybe minus three is looking good too. And finally, again, clicking on the gray drop down box and changing into the highlights where we're going to do exactly the same. Just take the magenta green and bring it down a little bit. Again, let's have a look at the before and after. And I think we're doing so much better. So that's the second tool you can use. You can use the color harmony tool together with the color balance. Here, look for the color you want to remove and then go towards the other way. So we wanted to remove green. So we went towards the magenta. Now again, we can close this tool and move to the next tool that we can use. This time we're going to stay in the middle of our main toolbar going for the mood tool. Mood tool is a tool that uses the LUTs to color grade the image and it will help us to adjust the skin color. To do this, we're going to click on a gray drop down box, which says choose LUT and we're going to go all the way to the bottom to one of the building collections, which help us with the portrait toning. Now hover over the different LUTs and see which one works the best for you. Don't worry too much about the shade to start with. We're just looking for something that looks natural. I think maybe the Sina or Rosa. Let's have a look. It really is up to you at this point. It's more artistic decision. This one looks a little bit more brighter. This one has a full colors, but I will go for the Rosa. Click on it to select it. And now, as always, I can adjust the amount here to see how much I want to add to the image. So again, this is the result before and after here. Now we can again close this tool and it would be a good time to have a look at before and after, after applying all the tools you just seen. So for that, we can go to the bottom of our toolbar and click on the eye icon there. So before and after. And the difference is huge. Now we are a little bit on a pink side and we can adjust that later. However, as a starting point coming from the green, this is already much better. Don't forget that you can fine tune all these tools when you go through them based on your own opinion and how you would like the image to look. To finish it off, we're going to go back to the main toolbar on the top of the list. And this time we're going to use the color tool. Click on it to open it and then navigate to the HSL panel. In the HSL panel, if you don't see it, you just click on it like this and then click on a gray drop down box and go into the hue. This is where we're going to be working only with the skin tones. So if you have adjusted everything and you want to just make this a little bit better, then for the skin, you want to be working with red, orange and yellow. Let's have a look at the red. 
When we shift it around, you can see there is lots of red in her face. So let's just reset it. And let's say that we want to make the face maybe just more orange or more pink, maybe just a little bit more orange. After that, with the orange, again, we slide it around and we can see that there is lots of orange in her face. However, looking at it, I don't want to adjust it too much. If anything, maybe just a little bit down to minus three. With the yellow, when we shift it around, there actually isn't too much yellow on her face, so we don't worry about it. So now we know that we have a lots of red and orange in her face. So let's go into our gray dropdown box and change it from hue to saturation. Now let's work with our red and orange. Let's see if we add a little bit of red. It's making the face a little bit more alive, but I think it's a little bit too much. So let's go just somewhere to plus five. And with the orange, we can make the face a little more orange or less. If we bring it down a little bit, it looks a little bit more natural. When we make it up, it looks a little warmer and maybe it adds a little fuller color to the overall face. To finish it, we can again change the gray drop-down box from saturation to luminance. And here again, we can use the red and orange sliders. And this time we can make the face a little brighter or a little darker. I think in my case, just a little bit of extra brightness will help. And with the orange, let's also add a little bit extra there. Now we can close this, we can close the tool and we are pretty much done. Let's have a look at the before and after. But while we're here and looking at the image, I want to use some of the portrait tools to finish the edit. So I'm going to speed this up. However, hopefully it will give you some inspiration of what you can do. And there you have it. So let's quickly jump into the edits where you can see that I used Faced AI, Skin AI. I have used the Erase tool to remove some of the imperfections and blemishes. I have add some nice vignette, little bit of warmth with the landscape tool. And to finish it off, I have added some glow and then use the gradient to just make it look like it's coming from this side. Now let's come back to the tools and just very quickly, let's have a look at the before and after. And I think the result is great. And now for the second time back in the edit module and again in the develop pro tool where I already applied the basic development. The only thing that is left is to fix the white balance. Same as with the first example. This is where you start your journey on removing the color cast from your portrait capture. So coming back to our white balance and following the same method, we don't worry here about the tint, so the green or magenta, but what the issue is, is the blue. So coming to the temperature slider, where we're working with the warm orange and yellow, and then cool blue. So now we can take the slider and go towards the other side, away from blue, and increase it a little bit. And by doing that, you can see that we removed most of the color cast already. So in this case and on this image, it was really this simple, simple slide of the temperature slider. Again, let's have a look at the before and after, and you can see how better it already is. Now let's just reset the temperature slider because I want to show you one more tool we can use to remove the color cast. So now let's close the developer tool and move into our color tool. Click on it to open it. And here you can see the slider that is called Remove Color Cast. By taking it and increasing it, you will see how it does really good job on removing most of the blue from our image. Of course that you would need to apply more edits to really adjust the colors and the skin tones. However, I just wanted you to know that this slider is here and you can also use it to remove the color cast from your images. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminar give. 
While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.